Have you ever been to a party and your drink was not mixed as well as you would like? Maybe it was served that way. Or perhaps you are the designated driver and you have been nursing your one drink limit and the ice has melted, creating a dilute layer on top. So you've asked yourself, what would be the best way to remix this drink? You could slosh it side to side or swirl around because using your finger as a swizzle stick is a definite no-no. Fortunately, ANSYS Fluent has multi-phase, multi-species volume of fluid simulation capabilities to solve this problem. Let's have a look. What is multi-phase flow? It is a fluid flow system consisting of two or more distinct phases, meaning solid, liquid, or gas. For example, air bubbles in water or dust in air. Or even two immiscible liquids, such as oil and water, as these fluids do not mix and retain a discrete interface between them. The modeling approach for multiphase flow depends on the type of interface between the phases. For example, the volume of fluid model is used for tracking the free surface between continuous fluids, such as waves in a pool or sloshing of a drink. The Eulerian model handles interpenetrating fluids and accounts for the interfacial area between the fluids. The discrete particle modeling is used for tracking particles in a continuous phase. What is a multi-species fluid? It is a fluid consisting of two or more miscible components. Unlike multiphase, there is not a distinct interface between species. This approach is used for tracking the variation of composition or concentration of species. For example, multi-species would be used to model the concentration of exhaust gases in air or the uniformity when blending paints or drinks. For our demonstration, we'll be simulating the mixing of vodka and juice in a moving glass. We will start from a glass with a layer of vodka over a layer of juice. We will compare the mixing effectiveness of two glass motions, lateral motion or sloshing, and circular motion or swirling. The motion of the glass would normally require mesh motion in the CFD simulation. However, a much simpler approach analyzes from the frame of reference of the glass and applies a varying acceleration corresponding to the prescribed motion. To create non-constant boundary conditions, Fluent now supports the use of expressions, which is much easier than writing user-defined functions in C, compiling and linking, as was previously required. We can create named expressions or enter expressions directly in a boundary condition. We will be using expressions in this demonstration for the equations of acceleration corresponding to the glass motion. I've outlined the steps in our simulation of creating the fluid volume and mesh, defining the materials, selecting the physics of multi-species and multi-phase, creating expressions for acceleration of the glass motion, applying boundary and initial conditions, creating monitors and animations, setting solution methods, time steps, and solving, and finally reviewing our results. After starting Fluent, we need to read in the mesh. The volume of the glass was sliced into three layers, named bottom, middle, and top. This provides a direct method of assigning the initial fluid locations for the juice, vodka, and air. A name called open was also created for the top surface where we will apply an atmospheric boundary condition. This will be a transient simulation, so we need to select transient under the general task page. We need to define the materials to be used in the simulation. From the materials task page, click create, edit, and enter the data for each fluid. We can keep the default fluid of air. To create a multi-species mixture, we need to enable the species model. Accept the default mixture, which we will replace with our own mixture under the materials task page. Under names, add juice and vodka. and remove the default species. These default materials can be deleted from the simulation. Then set the appropriate mixture physics. For density, select volume weighted mixing law. For viscosity, select mass weighted mixing law. And for diffusivity, we can keep the default value. To enable multiphase, double click the multiphase model and select Volume of Fluid Model, Implicit Volume Fraction, and Implicit Body Force, and click Apply. Under the tab, Faces tab, 
name and select air as the primary phase and drink as a secondary phase. We also change the viscous model to laminar. And turn off energy. Our target motion for sloshing is 100 millimeters of lateral motion in a one second sine wave cycle and for swirling a 100 millimeter diameter rotation per second. These motions are converted into X and Y accelerations. Named expressions are created and entered for these equations. These expressions are applied under the gravitational accelerations under the operating conditions of the cell zone conditions along with the normal gravity in the z-direction. The only boundary condition to apply is at the top which we change to a pressure outlet and set ambient pressure for the multiphase mixture. For multiphase flow, we also need to set the volume fraction of any backflow. Ideally, no drink should be spilled out of our glass, and only air should come back into the glass. So we set the volume fraction of drink to be zero. If we had any drink coming back into the domain, we would also need to set the mass fraction of juice in the drink entering the glass. For transient simulations, we need to provide an initial condition. The fluid is initially at rest, so we set all values to zero. We also initially set the drink volume fraction and mass fraction of juice in the drink to be zero for the entire glass volume. We then patch specific values of drink volume fraction of one for the bottom and middle of the glass and the mass fraction of juice in the drink to be one in the bottom of the glass. It is a good idea to create a contour on a section through the glass to ensure that the initial conditions are set correctly. A plane is created through the center of the glass. A contour of drink volume fraction shows the glass has been filled correctly. A contour of juice mass fraction shows the juice starting on the bottom of the glass. We can also use this contour for an animation image. Under Calculation Activities, Solution Animation, name the animation, set the recording interval, and select the animation object to use. To quantify the mixing, we will create a sampling location at the bottom of the glass and create a report definition to monitor the mass fraction of vodka at this location to track its progress towards a mixed value using a plot. For solution methods, select PISO for the pressure velocity coupling. The other default solution methods are acceptable. Set the number of time steps to 400 and a time step size of 0.01 seconds. This will provide four cycles of motion with 100 time steps each. We should save our case file and then click Calculate to run the simulation. For the swirling motion case, we can change the x and y accelerations to the expressions for swirl and rerun the simulation. While the simulations are running, perhaps we can conduct a physical test. I just happen to have all the items we need right here at my desk. I have carefully poured two layered drinks. I will slosh the first drink and swirl the second, four rotations, just like our simulation. Both show some mixing, but the swirl drink appears more mixed. Let's check our simulations. Good, they are done. We can capture our monitor plots. And under Animations, Playback, we can save our animations to a movie file. The monitors are showing similar levels of mixing, but the mixing is not complete. 
The test may have shown more mixing for the swirling case, but the glass motions were not well controlled in the test. Certainly one advantage of simulation is better control of the operating conditions. Playing back our animations shows the sloshing and swirling motion of the surface, as well as the mixing of vodka and juice. One last tip. It is best not to leave open containers next to your laptop. I suggest drinking them straight away. Cheers.